through this video material we can evaluate some of the techniques and material used by operators at squad when patrolling in full CBRN protected mode. In order to safely conduct a reconnaissance patrol deep into a potentially contaminated battlefield, the CBRN reconnaissance soldier must be well trained and prepared. In order to avoid discovery by radio reconnaissance of enemy forces, he must carry out his mission independently and without any radio contact to his unit. In fact it is unpredictable whether he will be able to return quickly. We must bear in mind he might get stuck in the contaminated area for a long time due to unexpected tactical circumstances. Therefore the soldier must be able to operate inside his hermetically sealed protective suit for many hours. As we can see, on his patrol operator's at squad is wearing a heavy gas type Zodiac suit of the German armed forces and along with it the M65Z gas mask, a ballistic helmet and a splinter proof flak jacket. But may we today draw your attention to one specific aspect of such fully encapsulated operation, the danger of dehydration. The gas type protective suit eliminates any cooling or ventilation by outside airflow. This leads to intensified sweating of the human body inside the protective rubberized liner. Furthermore, with the exhaled air moisture constantly is released through the exhalation valve of the gas mask into the environment. On the other hand, the air inhaled by the operator is dried by the multiple layers of his gas mask's filter. Increasing dehydration of the operator will significantly affect his mental and physical abilities and thus his combat and operational readiness. Therefore it is mandatory to ensure a sufficient liquid supply even in the contaminated combat area. Since the sweat accumulating inside the suit cannot be used for hydration, an external source is necessary. The liquid feed from the carry-on reservoir in the operator's combat pack of course has to be provided in a CBRN safe manner without breaking the life-saving seals of the protective equipment. In this video sequence we can see the liquid supply line, which runs from the reservoir in Zoda Squad's combat backpack along his right shoulder to a special connector stored in a pouch on his right chest. We can as well see the liquid feeding adapter on the right cheek side of the M65Z gas mask which is worn by the operator during the entire patrol. After unscrewing the cap covering the adapter, the soldier can pull the special connector out of the pouch on his chest and push its tip through the valve in the adapter of the gas mask. The adapter in the gas mask is installed in a position which allows the connector piece to directly point into the operator's mouth. As we can see here, it is important to have a close to the body coverage of the vital water supply tube. This helps to prevent it from being accidentally pulled off or damaged by branches, other vegetation or even weapons or technical reconnaissance equipment which might be supported on the operator's right shoulder. In addition to the described technical features, it is most important that the soldier performs the liquid supply procedures regularly during both patrol and combat. There is intense drill training required to make it natural to him to hydrate in time. Finally we ask Zed Squad to demonstrate the correct hydration procedure to our audience. The cap is unscrewed from the gas mask's adapter. Next the tube connector is pulled out of its pouch and it is pushed through the adapter's valve right into the operator's mouth. Now it is only the shut-off valve in the water supply tube that has to be unlocked. And water is running.
after drinking, the operator first locks the shut-off valve in the water supply tube coming from the backpack reservoir. This ensures that no contaminated material will flow back through the tube into the reservoir as soon as it is disconnected from the gas mask. After pulling the connector out of the gas mask, the mask's adapter valve is secured again by sewing on the protective cap.